it seems to be summertime and the time of year when uh, cooking outside on a barbecue is, you know, what you do. We've got the wheelchair Traeger over here that I built a number of years ago, but I need to, well, I had a 24 volt power inverter on it so it could run off of the batteries built into the chair power base. But I wound up changing the electronics on it and I took that off and I haven't had a chance to put it back on yet. And it's buried, it's buried right there. You can kind of see it. But I ran across a new 24 volt Victron power inverter, sort of a smaller one. It's 375 VA. And this thing is probably 95% inductive load when it's starting up. So I think it should be big enough to work. But anyways, uh, we're gonna move the C500 here and some stuff out of the way and uh, work on this here barbecue. And yes, my barbecue is stacked full of VCRs for some reason. In case you haven't seen this thing before, it is an Invacare TDX SI HD with a Traeger Liltex uh, Pro, I don't know, something, it's, it's an older model. But this was back in 2015 when I built this and they came with these little skinny stupid legs that went straight up and down and when you stack 20 pounds of pellets in that box and try to push the thing around on its little wheels, all I would do is fall over. I had originally built this chair, well I got it for parts, I took the four pole motors off of it and used them on something else and they subsequently burned out because, you know, Invicare. But I had originally built this thing into sort of a vending cart, I've got some photos of that. The idea was I could, you know, have the joystick on there and have a couple coolers in there, run around and sell drinks, you know, like random street vendors everywhere. Uh, I got shut down usually within less than five minutes everywhere I went, so I was like, huh. So we just grabbed the Traeger and stuck it on here instead. This was just sort of a temporary attachment method, but as you know, when you're working on a project, temporary becomes permanent. It's been this way since 2015, but I picked up the bolt holes here that held the legs on and then I put some of this Swiss cheese angle iron, I always forget the name of things, um, and then just kind of attached the joystick on here and whatnot. But the cool thing with this is I originally had it set up with a power inverter because there's batteries in there. This thing only pulls about 300 watts while it's starting up, which takes maybe 5 to 10 minutes, 15 at the most. But when it's operating, it's maybe 30 watts. There's just a little uh, synchronous motor and a couple of fans. This chair has gone through a few revisions. I wound up changing the electronics on it. It it had a different controller that wasn't really necessary, so I put a smaller one on here and wound up taking out the power inverter that I had at the time. Anyways, project for today, we have this here thing. Um, this is a Victron Energy. It's a 24 volt, 375 VA version. So I think 375 we should be good. Anywho, I'm going to grab some tools, hop onto the floor. Oh, I think they're, hmm, trying to remember now. There was room for my old inverter down below. Yeah, it looks like it'll fit down there. Anyways, I'm gonna grab some tools and then uh, we'll reconvene on the floor. A couple of quick updates here before we get started. I. Uh, I've been hard at work on the, well I just moved it, this Tredo is over there. But I've been hard at work on the um, the eye level speed inhibitor bypass cables. I've actually got some of those made up. They are on the website now. There's free shipping within the continental United States. Shipping to other countries I'm not sure about. I mean, contact me, maybe we can figure out something, but then again, I don't know. I was running out of space in here, so uh, someone gave me this table. So we've got that now, got that all set up. Got uh, got some batteries underneath it and some storage and whatnot, so that's been super handy. As far as the bypass cables go, they're very simple. I decided to just make them for now that, so you plug them in and you can raise your seat lift. Well, you'll notice on the website it says for testing purposes and diagnosing issues. I, uh, I'm not quite sure how to list these things. It is pretty dangerous to run your seat lift up all the way, for example and uh, drive around at full speed. I was thinking about making a version of these that have a switch so you could turn them on and off. That'll come later if people are interested or not. 
but basically, I'll be making a video on how to install these, I haven't done that yet. But it's basically just a little four pin Molexy micro fit connector with the appropriate wiring inside. You unplug the inhibitors for the I-level micro switches and you plug this in, chair's good to go. All of them will look slightly different just because I'm like hand making them or whatever. But I've ordered a few more parts, getting all the stuff from DigiKey and whatnot and having to pan everything myself. Learning how to use the crimper tools and you know using the appropriate gauge wire and all that stuff. These things are very small. I have to use my, where is it? I have to use my, my old man um, magnifying lenses to even see the things. <laughs> but anyways, those are up on the website now. Also, not sure if it was in frame. I don't know if any of you watch uh, LGR or Lazy Game Reviews. Um, I, well, I've been working on the, uh, it's basically a vinyl cutter or a cutting machine. And you might be able to see there on the screen. The first thing I cut with this was this, obviously, for some reason, but just working on getting that thing figured out. I'm um, going to be ordering the material for screen protectors and also the ICS light shades here, hopefully this week. No guarantees, but uh, we're at least getting stuff set up and, you know, making progress here. We got more workspace back there and all that, so. Anywho, um, let's get to the barbecue. Yeah, so apparently I never put the cover back on this. I guess that makes things a little bit easier. Before we get too carried away here though, we should probably inspect this thing. I'm, I'm using the, the lights on my F3, by the way, to attempt to illuminate this. But we should probably pull this thing out of the package and have a look at it before we get too crazy here. Oh, this thing's heavy. I think they use, uh, oh. yeah, I think these have toroidal toroidal wound transformers inside of them. So they're a low frequency inverter, which means, well, they're a lot more robust. We'll just say that. Here's our inputs. Uh, actually, what is our maximum amperage? Uh, they, they usually have a chart for the amount of amperage these things will pull. Oh, here we go. So this is the 24375. Minimum battery capacity, 30 amp hours, okay, whatever. Internal DC fuse is 40 amps. Okay, so this system's never gonna see more than 40 amps at full load. Perfect. Which probably explains why these terminals are not super huge. Yeah, we've got, we've got plenty of space here we can mount that inverter in. Man, this thing is dusty, I should probably clean it. Uh, looks like I used electrical tape to cover everything here. So let's see if we can remove electrical tape with this knife without filleting my finger this time. Uh, I believe we were working on the bounder last time I used this knife. And uh, yeah, kind of sprung a leak. But what we're trying to do here is pull out our main battery connection cable. Then we're gonna tap into that, add a 40 amp automatic circuit breaker and uh, solder in some wires to power the inverter. This here's our battery connection, so we can unplug that. And then, oh, apparently this whole thing's held in with zip ties. Man, I think I was in a hurry when I, um, when I swapped the electronics in this. <laughs> Let's pull our power cable off here. There we go. Here it is. And basically we're just going to... Oh, this is actually some pretty nice flexible wire. But we're gonna cut this somewhere in the middle. And... Uh, well, here, I'll just show you. So I went down to one of the usual scumbags, aka big name auto parts store. Got some 10 gauge wire, which... Uh, 30 amps maybe? We're not gonna be running full load though. And if we are, not for very long. And then just a 40 amp automatic circuit breaker. And some little terminals. I think we want our connections to come off somewhere up here. And that plugs into the batteries right there. So we will peel back some of this wiring loom material. And yeah, right, right up here should be good. And have our connections kind of come out up here. 
I also grabbed some of the proper Scotch electrical tape. Yeah, so the Super 33 has extremely strong adhesive. And the Super 88 is a slightly thicker version. I'll put links to the stuff down below. It's pretty handy. And you definitely want to keep it in its little container. It'll stick to everything in your toolbox. Seeing as how this project is not critical infrastructure, we're just going to do the quick and dirty semi-high amperage connection method here. We're not going to be pulling, you know, 40 amps out of this and maybe 30 amps sustained for a couple minutes, but without cutting the wire, I'm going to cut back the insulation and then we will basically thread this wire through the middle, twist and solder and do all that. So let's just peel some of this off here. There we are. A couple exposed sections here. I kind of offset them just a little bit so when I tape them up, the resulting mass of tape isn't quite as huge. Let's get our wire here. And yes, we are going to be connecting copper to aluminum, but low voltage, not, let go, low voltage, not super high amperage. Meh, we gotta do. Once again, quick and dirty. That's copper. That's aluminum. The auto parts dispensary did not have 10 gauge wire in red and black. So we're gonna be using two black wires. Once again, just pay attention, whatever. Okay, are you ready for secrets of how to burn your house down? So we have stripped wire here, right? We're just gonna take this screwdriver, work it right through the middle of all these strands like so. And now we have a nice gap going through the middle. We're going to take our strip wire here, simply push it through the middle, and we are going to wrap half of it one direction, like so, and then wrap the other half in the opposite direction. And now we have a little connection here that should handle 30 amps, no problem. I'm, I'm going to solder this though. Well, I'm going to attempt to solder it. I don't have a soldering iron here with enough wattage to handle wire this size, so we're just gonna use a torch. <laughs> uh, quality. Gas station torch. <laughs> and um, yeah, heat it up and add solder. If this thing will work. The only problem with soldering this way is you tend to burn the insulation on the wire a little bit, but once again, not a super critical project. And, ta-da, we have kind of an ugly looking thing that has two wire taps coming off of our cable that goes to the controller from the batteries. I'm trying to figure out where I want to mount this. I could zip tie it directly to the cable, but I think maybe Actually, I'm going to turn this thing around. We're going to clean it off a little bit. Then verify that our verifier inverter here is going to fit inside there and whatnot. Okay, moment of truth. Is this project even going to work? Oh, yeah, no problem. Look at that. Goes right in there. See? Power inverter underneath the chair. Let's go ahead and get our circuit breaker set up here. Just one of these little busman automatic, oh, that says 12 volts. Eh, amperage is amperage on, with uh, DC voltage, right? Yeah, guess we'll find out. Um, let's get this set up here. Got some ring terminals. Now, I just decided to go ahead and mount our circuit breaker directly on the cable. I don't know what that looks like on camera. I'm just, I got a tiny viewfinder here, but to my eye, it looks, you know, okay. It's gonna be underneath here and shielded from everything, so I think we should be good. I'll probably uh, go ahead and tape off these terminals too when we install it, just to keep anything from shorting out on there. But uh, yeah, use a couple zip ties. Seems to be all right. Okay, our cable creation is complete. I've got both the outputs here. Now we're ready to mount this thing. I realize I don't have all my hardware out here, but I was able to scrounge around some of these containers and I found exactly two tech screws. So we're going to use two just to mount the back of this thing under there for now. And next time I take it out to the bus, I'll get the other two installed. 
But this thing has these little mounting ears here and the metal brackets on the back go into those. So nice solid mounting. On the back here, once again, we've got our inputs from the battery and we've got our on, off and eco switch. Then on the front, there's a single outlet, which is all we need for this thing. I have a stubby screwdriver. I have a feeling this is going to be super obnoxious, but uh, let's see if we can run some tech screws in by hand. I cleaned everything off in here. It was very, very filthy. I, I forgot at the old house I left this thing outside 24-7, which we are definitely not going to be doing any more, especially now that we've got this inverter down here and we don't want to, uh, don't want to hose the thing. Uh, my finger's even going to fit in here. There's got to be a better way of doing this. Let me see if I can find a slightly shorter stubby screwdriver. Alright, now that's what I'm talking about. The question is, well, what is the meaning of life? There we go, I can at least get my hand in here now. Uh, is that side lined up? Not quite, let's pull that over a little bit. Maybe, uh, here, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna make some scratches here. Then I'm gonna try and start these. Yeah, there we go. Move the inverter out of the way and I'm gonna start these by hand. With, uh, without it there, so there's a little bit more space. We're just going through plastic, so it's not too big of a deal. He says, knowing full well, that his hands are going to turn to jello. Oh, is there metal under here? Okay, good, there's not. Okay, I got the first one started. Okay, I think we're making progress. Yep, I see shards of plastic. Okay. My hands are... Oh, my coffee's out of reach. It's all the way over there on the desk. Yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. You can see there. We're, we're, we're definitely, we're definitely getting traction. A few more turns. Fingers are burning. Okay. One side is done. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to let my fingers turn from lava back into whatever they're usually made out of for a minute or two. Then I'll come back and we'll finish this wiring. Now that we're down in here... Oh, I see. So the reason I just hung this with zip ties is there's supposed to be a couple of mounts that hold this thing on with some rubber grommets. You know what? I think I have some of those. They are... Well, all my wheelchair parts are, all my wheelchair parts are in these bins right here, and all the house plants are currently on top of them. Um, I would also like to get the back cover back on here. Uh, uh, I think this is probably the time to do it. Yeah, I'm gonna rest for a few minutes, and I'm gonna see if I can dig in those bins and uh, find the proper mounting for this thing. If we're going to do OCD, we got to do it right. More scrounging around and I found two more tech screws. So we're going to go ahead and get these installed, I think. Hmm. This would be a lot easier if I just pulled this thing off with the Hoyer. Eh, whatever. We'll just get it done. Okay, um, I dug through all those crates. None of the adapters were in there. But then I remembered I have these parts boxes. And uh, I distinctly remember seeing a couple of these things in this box. So I hope there's another one in here. Because there only being one would be strange. Yeah. 
Oh, here it is. There. Saved by hoarding all the fasteners in the world. Now, we can get the controller reattached on this thing. This right here is a hole in a piece of metal. And this is a rubber grommet that is designed to slide directly into that. And the bolts go through this. So, um, whoop. There we go. Proper mounting. Let me put the one on the other side now. Ta-da! We have a thing with two rubber grommets. Um, yeah. So, now, just usually don't do this with the cables connected, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, framing. There, see? Uh, fancy. It's attached, kind of shock mounted and stuff. Yeah, this is, uh, this is getting pretty professional. <laughs> Except for the part where I sliced open this cable. Anyways, um, what's next? I couldn't find the cover that goes on the back of this, so we're just gonna have to rock without a cover for now, I guess. So I'm just gonna zip tie these motor cables to some random piece of metal here. And we've got our bus cable. Yeah, we'll deal with that later. Throw that out of the way. Um, I think we are ready to connect our magical, whoop, to connect our magical, hopefully not exploding cable. And um, see if this works. Dude, I'm gonna be so annoyed if this inverter is not able to power this barbecue. Um, I think we should be good, but yeah. If not though, um, yeah, gonna be a sad panda because that was a lot of work getting that mounted in there. I'm trying to get this cable off of here. Come off you. I I'm gonna do some cable management and get this all tied up and then I'll show you before we plug it in. I think we might be ready to power this up and see what kind of magic smoke appears. Um, I'm expecting a little bit of an arc because this thing's never been powered up before, but uh, well, here we go. Oh, that was barely an arc at all. Come on, in you go. Yeah. Okay, now let's push the button. It's on! Yay, we have a green light. Cool. So let's turn that back off. Um, awesome. Okay, um, I do believe we're done. We got all the wiring kind of laid out here. Everything zip tied in place. I just put some tape over the top of the posts on this. The rest of that's hanging out in the open, which is fine. I think the only thing left to do here is try and power up the barbecue with the chair's batteries and uh, see if it'll do stuff. Huh, still drives around. Nice. Oh, I still have to route the power cord down there, I just realized. Let's do that while we're still sitting on the floor. Actually, we'll turn this off, throw it back in neutral. And we've got the power cord from our Traeger here. There's probably a better place I could put that cord, but for now, I just want to make sure this is even going to work. Okay, drive, power on. Let's see if we can get a camera angle so that you can see the screen on the barbecue and the power inverter. Uh, ah, there we go. Barbecue screen's right here. So let's fire up our inverter. Okay, we've got a green light. And let's hit the button and see if it starts squealing. Also, don't have my clamp ammeter here to see how much power we're pulling. But yeah, our hot rod should be on right now and it should be dumping pellets into the burn pot. The inverter is not going into low power mode. I don't know if we can rely on this for our 
our battery level. I should probably add another battery gauge to this thing because the dynamic controls that this is using has current sensing. So if power is leaving the system somewhere other than through the drive motors, um, it may not affect that gauge. So it probably, ew, gross. So it probably wouldn't hurt for me as um, grease from the last time I cooked on this on my arm. Yeah, so it wouldn't hurt to get an external gauge. All right, cool. Well, it seems to work. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that off before it actually lights because we don't want to fill this place with smoke. All right, sweet. <laughs> awesome. Oh man, I am so excited to have this thing back online again. And, uh, and now it's completely autonomous. Um, yeah, that's great. I'm not quite sure how good the batteries are in this thing. So I'm not sure what the runtime will be. Like I said, the hot rod pulls about 300 watts while it's starting up, which I think is up to maybe 15 minutes at the most. Then after that, um, there's just a synchronous motor for the auger to feed the pellets. Then there's a cooling fan inside the control box here and a blower fan to keep air moving through. And I think, I think they said that was maybe 30 watts or something, but not much at all. So yeah, awesome. I, uh, I do need to go through this thing though. The burn box does need to be replaced in here. Like I said, I've been running this thing since 2015. So after a while of heating and cooling and all that, the uh, metal starts to kind of fatigue and rust and stuff. I uh, could clean it up a little bit too. Also that big drip tray in there needs to be replaced as well. That thing's gotten all warped and weird. Man, I really wanna, oh yeah, it's full. I really want to take this somewhere and barbecue with it right now, but there's no place around here I know of that I could do it. And it's also like 10 o'clock at night. Then I have to bring it back here, so, eh, I don't know. Okay, I really want to run this through a startup cycle, so let's go ahead and do that. There we go, starting to get smoke. Okay, um, so maybe the current monitoring doesn't matter. As you can see, our gauge has gone down quite a bit here on the chair. So maybe that will work as a battery gauge. It's almost done uh, going through the startup process, so we'll see if that goes back up when it's complete. Yeah, now our gauge is starting to go back up. All right, cool. So that is gonna be an accurate representation of the batteries, even though we're using an inverter. Sweet. All right, cool. Well, the thing seems to work pretty well. We took it outside. I've got it plugged in, charging right now. But I took it outside and I was using my golf course voice out there because I'm afraid someone might hear me. But we ran it through a full startup cycle, which is about 15 minutes, and then probably another 20 minutes of shutdown, so it stopped smoking before I brought it in here. But it was interesting that the battery gauge actually seems to go up and down based on the voltage of the battery. Dynamic control systems, well, some of them. All the ones I've taken apart do have current monitoring, monitoring but it's unclear as to whether they implement that in the battery gauge on all the different joysticks and versions of the control systems. But anyways, it seems to work. Regardless, I'm gonna get a battery monitor, like a voltmeter, and stick it on there, just so I can keep an eye on things. These batteries had not been charged in over three months, and they've just been sitting here. So the fact that it lost, you know, all of its green bars and one yellow, I think these batteries might be okay. Now, they are Group 22 because it's an older Invacare pro product, which is weird because this was an HD variant. Eh, whatever, they're small batteries. I might be able to fit bigger ones in there. But for now, I'm super happy to have that thing working. It's gonna be really nice to be able to take it to some of the events and gatherings and stuff we're doing. And don't need electricity, don't need to carry charcoal or lighter fluid. Roll the thing into the van, roll it out, hit a couple buttons, boom, you can barbecue. So. Really nice to have a power inverter back on there again. The one I had on there previously was kind of underpowered and 
Yeah, anyways, this is a much better quality one. I'm glad I ran across it. <laughs> so there you go. Cordless barbecue. Um, it, it's one of those things where, what's the saying about necessity and invention and, and also, flat surfaces will immediately always become filled with stuff. I mean, I just got that table set up and it's already full. <laughs> That's kind of my workstation at the moment though for getting the uh, quantum bio eye level. It's, it's almost midnight and it's still like 80 degrees in here. Words, I'm working on stuff. Shut up, it's a mess. <laughs> All right, well, um, I think we're gonna call that good. Worked on a little project today and uh, it's always nice when you get something done and it works and all that. So this is the point where I'm rambling and I'm gonna say I will see you Thursday on the live stream. Thanks for watching. Ooh, there's a little bit of coffee left. Mmm, coffee.